So what is the truth about psychoneuroimmunology? What do we know and what is wishful thinking? Uh, what are the exciting new areas? We'll be talking about that. How do the systems connect? How is it that the brain can actually interact with and influence our immune cells circulating around in the body, in our immune organs? How does that work? What about stress? Does stress actually affect the immune system? In what way exactly? Do our thoughts matter? Does it make a difference how we think about the stress, how we think about other kinds of aspects of our lives? Do our actual you know, ways of construing the world influence the immune system or not? In particular, we'll talk about the social world, your ways of thinking about others in your, um, in your, in your uh, uh, social world and your perceptions of that, and do those influence the immune system as well. Can your mind contribute to disease? Can you actually influence disease processes to some extent by your psychological mindset? Can the immune system influence your brain and change your thoughts and feelings? As I mentioned, this is a newer area, very, very interesting. And what do we do with all this? Are there interventions that have been developed and tested that can actually improve the functioning of your immune system in some significant way? And we'll get to that. So what I'm going to do, as I mentioned, is I'm going to start by just giving us an introduction to the immune system so you get a sense of the different types of cells um, that are going on and uh, that are very central to the functioning of our immune system. And then we'll be talking about those functions throughout the day as we talk about stress and interventions and things like that. So we have an immune system for a variety of reasons. We think about this mostly, this middle one, destroying and clearing foreign, foreign organisms. And you've all seen those images, right? Somebody sneezes and all the virus particles get out into the air and you, you see the person breathing them in and you know they become infected. Usually when I say that, someone coughs, but no one did this time. It's amazing. So, so anyway, this is clearly you know, the ability of your immune cells in various parts of your body to be able to detect, recognize foreign organisms and destroy them is you know, the key part um, that we'll be talking about. Very important though, is that in that active killing process, your immune cells very sensitively differentiate between something that's foreign or one of your cells that's infected with something that's foreign versus your own healthy cells. Because autoimmune diseases are those diseases where the body doesn't make that discrimination well and actually begins, the immune system cells begin to attack the body's own cells. So this is, a, this is autoimmunity where the immune system attacks the body's own cells and there's a variety of diseases that can develop um, as a result of that. So this is a very important function the careful discrimination of each immune cell's recognition of that foreign organism as being foreign and not part of the body's own um, repertoire of cells. And the third part is ignoring self when, uh, in general, right? So not destroying um, uh, your body's own cells unless your body's own cells have begun to replicate rapidly as you see in the context of cancer, right? So the immune system plays a role to some extent in detecting when uh, your healthy cells have turned into a tumor, have multiplied and turned into a tumor, and they can, those cells can destroy those tumors to some extent. Okay, so here's a variety of cells floating around in your bloodstream. The cells we're going to be talking about today are almost completely in the category of white blood cells or leukocytes. Our immune cells are primarily leukocytes and there are a variety of different types, T cells, B cells. And so we're going to walk through and look at different types of white blood cells and what they do. So um, again, I, I mentioned they're called leukocytes. Uh, there's a big group here, polymorphonuclear granulocytes, that are a really, really big part of um, your white blood cells, your leukocytes like neutrophils. 
Um, ha uh, very many of your white blood cells are neutrophils. We'll talk a little bit about those. We'll spend a lot more time on these two categories of white blood cells. Most of the research in this area has been focused on whether stress, et cetera, influences these. So one category is called the lymphocyte, and that's uh, 20 to 40% of your white blood cells. And there's three main types, the T lymphocyte, the B lymphocyte, and the natural killer cell. So we'll talk about those. And then the last category, the monocyte macrophage, small percentage, but very important at actually triggering a lot of these uh, immune changes. So where are your immune cells and where do those cells interact with foreign organisms? The one place that you have a lot of white blood cells is in your lymphatic vessels and your lymph nodes. So shadowing along your blood vessels, you have these other vessels, lymphatic vessels, that are kind of like the super highway for your white blood cells. That's how they get from place to place in the body. Does anybody have a chair uh, next to you that this young lady could sit in? Anybody? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so it looks like maybe up here. Yeah, great. Okay, so... Um, uh, so you've got your white blood cells um, uh, in the lymphatic vessels, as I mentioned. That's how they get from place to place. And they're packed in your lymph nodes. And you kind of recognize that when you get a cold or a flu, right? Because your lymph nodes swell. That's the multiplication of those white blood cells um, in, you know, getting ready to engage with whatever virus or whatever you, you've uh, been exposed to. Um, they lie in wait in the vessels and it's particularly in the nodes, the lymph nodes, to come in contact with something foreign so they can engage them and destroy those organisms. There's also white blood cells in your bone marrow. In fact, that's where your white blood cells start and then emerge and then circulate around into the body. There's also white blood cells in your thymus gland. And T cells, named for thymus, um, uh, differentiate into functioning T cells uh, in that gland um, from precursor cells. So the, T the thymus, despite the fact that it shrinks over time, is a critical organ um, in terms of T cell uh, differentiation, you know, becoming a functioning um, uh, cell to protect us. Another location for a lot of your white blood cells is the spleen. So in your spleen, you have um, white blood cells, and that's a filtering system for the blood. The blood goes through the spleen. Organisms can um, uh, be floating in the bloodstream, and in that organ, um, as it goes through the spleen, white blood cells can interact with those organisms and destroy them. There's a lot of other organs um, in the body that are packed with white blood cells. I've told you about some of the key uh, lymphatic organs, but even our gastrointestinal tract is filled with white blood cells, and that makes sense, right? Because if we eat something or drink something that has some infectious agent in it, you want your GI tract to say, oh, wow, you know, that's a foreign organism. I need to destroy that. And I have a very close colleague um, at UCLA, Peter Anton, who's a gastroenterologist immunologist. And he starts all his lectures with saying that the largest immune organ in the body is the GI tract. It's a big organ, lots of organism contact taking place there. 